here's some tricks that I learned with printing, especially on a glass bed. So a lot of FEM prints on a glass bed are really uh, affected by temperature. Here's an example of the previous print I did. And you could see on a flat surface here, there was this warping where this one side came up off the bed. Everything got a little compressed. It's not perfectly flat on the bottom. Um, all the other sides are pretty good, especially over on this side. And that was really on this glass bed. The back side, the side back here stays at a constant temperature. The side up here, especially when the, the bed plate is lifted, gets cool at the front here. So one of the things I do is I use a Raspberry Pi camera just to watch it so I could watch all over the house. Um, and then the second thing I found, especially with these ones, I tried um, a, a new technique that worked really well. I just took standard glue, the washable glue with the purple glue stick, and rubbed it on the glass bed right before printing. Especially rubbed it right around this area and this side that had that curling from before. Now the prints stayed really well and flat. Um, everything seems flat. You get this much nicer edges that work really well. And so when I start peeling these off, it comes off nicely. The only thing to think through is it leaves a bit of this residue underneath. And so you need to to clean that off in between prints. When putting the tiles together, a lot of times you can see as you slot them together, everything's not perfectly flat on the bottom slant. So if you put three of them in, you sometimes get this lift. You can see it just doesn't stand flat. And the more you do, the more that gets amplified and becomes a real kind of pain to work with. The first thing I do usually is take a knife or something sharp enough and then just scratch down the edges usually there's a little bit of a lip left from printing and so if you do it just right you can get a good good level of the, the plastic off and that that flattens it out some now that doesn't always work and so then the last thing i do is i use a heat gun if you open the the tiles up about four or five seconds. You want me to watch out because the top is really hot. Then you put the, the pieces in, push them together, and they flatten out really well. And that, that lift is sometimes gone. Sometimes what you want to do after you put them in, you push them down a little, let them kind of mold, and reverse that curvature that, that sometimes pops up. And then you're then it really removes a lot of that warping that comes in and flattens it out much better. Now, another thing I found is that um, these are printed at 100%, and I use two different filaments just to, I was trying something with different heights. The other thing I found is printing at 150% works really well, and then always printing with a brim. Sometimes you can peel the brims off, sometimes you need to go back and, and slice off just that little bit extra material to really get it so that there's no edge on the bottom side. And then um, the pieces will fit together pretty well. Uh, sometimes they don't. And again, using the, the heat gun helps a lot. And, and that knife just to scour off the little bottom part that helps. But I found that the 150% pieces seem to work really well. And when I put them together, Shift over to this side. Put them together. You get a really nice, large-scale terrain. Um, where that 150 percent looks pretty well. And, and usually, if they're done you, um, with 10 percent infill, and also if you put them with uh, only two or three walls instead of the, the usual four or five walls, they can print pretty fast. Again, you want to make sure you print everything at 150% or everything out the same size to get them to fit in. Last thing that I do, um, I'll do those a little bit later, is take and then paint a surface primer over the top of them. So that's going to be my next step with these is to, to paint them, put a surface primer over the top, and then start putting actual color on them. What I do is if 
I have a few of them that I messed up the prints. You can see there was some warping on the bottom of this one where it got really scrunched together. Um, I saved these, these pieces, and this one I had it accidentally embedded into the print for. And then I paint these first to practice my painting techniques and to try different colors. So I flattened all these pieces out, 100% size ones, and I did a first layer of, of primer on these, these pieces. Again, the way I do it is I just take a normal paintbrush. Usually I get kind of the, the larger sized angled ones. These are really cheap, you know, $1 brushes. Um, and uh, don't put too much paint, and then just do a good layer in, making sure to go into all the, the nooks and crannies and all the, the small parts. Usually I'll do two layers of primer over everything. Again, brushing it on I think is better than spray painting it because it um, gives a much flatter uh, um, coverage over everything. So again, I'll pick a piece and start painting over it. Making sure to cover everything. And that's why the, the angled brush is nice because you can kind of use the, the big side to, to do coverage and then the little side to go into, into any of the, the crevices or road pieces or, or sides. So, so again, first flattened everything out with the, the heat brush uh, or the heat gun, and then start putting the, the primer on. The um, one thing that I found is really useful is these tiles. These are just three to five dollars at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, I use two different ones, and then when you're using a heat brush, it won't melt anything behind it. Definitely don't use a heat brush on uh, anything plastic or rubber because it'll just cook that, gets really hot real fast. The heat brush or the heat gun um, heats up the PLA plastic and basically pushes it to its glassy point. It turns the hard plastic into almost uh, very malleable, very bendable, almost like clay. So you can move things around and, and push things into crev or into to cavities or other areas that normally it wouldn't have fit in. So it becomes really good, gets it to kind of stick together pretty well. And then if I really need things to stick, then I use the Loctite Super Glue that, that really helps things stick together. But again, the, the beauty of these pieces is that hopefully we don't need to glue them together, they'll just fit and you can reconfigure them as needed.